up to hymn number 359, 359, Hark, Jesus Christ. It's 
It's been very busy. Is anyone else? Great. I like that. I wish I was like you. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to do something different. Can I ask all of you to stand and face the congregation and say, Good morning, parents. Okay, so I don't have a story to tell you. <laughs> but we are going to do something different. Okay, because I don't know how to tell stories. So now I want a volunteer. Someone who knows my voice. Not my amigo, of course. <laughs> Come on, Anya. Are you sure you know my voice? Yeah? I'm going to blindfold you, you know? Yeah? And then I'll give you instructions. Okay? I've checked, you can't see, you can't hear. <laughs> you can hear. Can you hear my voice? Okay. So now, I'm going to give you instructions, Tanya. Are you sure you know my voice? Are you sure? Can you take a step forward? One step forward. That's a very small step. That's nice. Just go to your right. These are two steps. Yeah? Can you just go back two steps backward? Two steps backward. Okay. Which side is your right? So now, go two steps to your right. Well done. Now, Well done. 
You don't have to be scared. Okay? Let's do it again. Wait, I didn't give you instruction yet. <laughs> be patient, okay? Take one step to your left. Well done. One step to your left again. Left again. Left again. Left. Well done. Two steps forward. Three steps forward. Stop right there. Can you turn around? Take three steps forward. Two steps forward. Okay. So, one step forward. One step forward. One big step forward. <laughs> You're doing well. Okay? One step forward. Can you take one step forward? Take one step forward, please. Okay. Now, take two steps forward. Did you bump on something? Take one step backward. One step forward, again, just a small step. There's a step in front of you, so I want you to climb that step. Well done. No, I'll tell you when to jump off. <laughs> I'll tell you to jump off. So, just stay there. Don't be scared, I'm with you here, okay? Yeah. Go up. Just stay there, okay? Don't move. Just stay right there where you are. <coughs> Now 
children, everyone else who has got a different lesson apart from what Tanya said. What lesson can we learn from that? From all what Anya was doing. Hmm? Anyone else? Okay, so what Anya is saying is very true. What we can learn from here is that we need to trust God and listen to his voice. Okay? Do you know that God speaks to us? You know that, right? So we have to follow his instructions. And when God says, follow this rule, we have to follow because God himself is going to guide us. Okay? Does anyone know why I was putting a bag in front of Anya? Yes, my uncle. To see if she would walk over it or not. Well done. Do you know why I was putting the bag in front of Anya? I don't know. I don't, I don't know obstacle. <laughs> you see now, all of you are reading my notes. I've seen that. Okay. I was putting the bags in front of Anya just because, you know, as you are growing children, as we are growing children, we are going to meet obstacles. Yeah? You know, sometimes we meet those mean friends who tell us to do something that we are not supposed to. Yeah? But when we listen to God's voice, God will tell us not to do and to do the right stuff. Okay? And also, we need to pray hard, we need to pray more, so that we should be able to know the difference between God's voice and the devil's voice. Okay? Today is Health Emphasis Day. And the adults are talking about how we should stay healthy as much as possible. And can I ask somebody to come and read for me Proverbs? Just come on, man, go. Otherwise, I'm going to pay for this. Proverbs 3, verse 7 to 8. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil, and it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Okay? So the Bible is saying, Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to our flesh and strength to our bones. So one of the ways to stay health is to listen to God's voice. And when we listen to God's voice, God himself will tell us what to do with our bodies and what not to do with our bodies. Okay? And you know, another thing is, you know, our church worldwide is in the 10 days of prayer. The others have already prayed this morning. Mm -hmm. They are focusing on the Holy Spirit. So as children, we need to pray more so that the Holy Spirit should dwell with us. Okay? So we need to read the Bible because it's only the Bible which that we can get the instructions, God's instructions, isn't it? So we need to pray more this year. We need to focus on God more. Is that right, children? Right. Now, thank you, Anya. Can I ask one volunteer to pray? And after that, I'll ask Sister Paulette to come and pray for the children, all of us, so that we should focus on God more and ask the Holy Spirit to be with us. One volunteer. Thank you, God, for keeping us safe. My Heavenly Father, Jesus, protect us. Thank you for giving us us the stale food. For Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. And Paulette is going to pray for all of us. Wasn't that a wonderful story, children? It was a story, Auntie, that lovely message. Okay, Auntie's asked me to pray for you, and I am really happy to pray for you. So we're going to close our eyes, yes? 
Ready? Okay. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much that you are a good God to us, and you're so good. You've blessed us with children. And Lord, these lovely children of Lord yours that you've given to us, for a time we pray and ask that you will help them to understand that every step they take every day is important, that they should listen to your voice. And Lord, even though there may be obstacles along the way, they must hear your voice and be obedient to you. So Lord, we ask that you bless and keep them safe. We pray for your Holy Spirit to guide us as parents and guardians. And in so far as we are guided, we can be examples so they can be guided also. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your care. Help them to know that they are very precious to us, Lord, and that we love them so much. And we want good things for them. But you want much better, so much more. And you love them so much more. So be with them in a special way, Lord. Help them to have a good day today and enjoy the Sabbath. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, children. You can go back to your seats. Can we let, uh, sorry, Mike, can we let a uh, certain song for children as well? I don't know if you like it. Uh, we say when she finished the story, we say, We like your story. Some of you might know it. Yes, we do. When I say, We like your story. Yes, we do. Okay. We like your story. Yes, we do. We like your story. Yes, we do. So don't forget to come again, to come again. Oh, yes, to tell us more. We like your story. Yes, we do. We like your story. Yes, we do. So don't forget to come again, to come again. Oh, yes, to tell us more. That's how it goes. Our speaker today is one and only Henson. We know him, isn't he? Yeah. He's our local. Henson uh, is a family man. Uh, he liked to make fun of me. Most of the time, if you don't know that term sometimes, he had jokes, he had joking on me. So most of the time, I always pushed him away. He never is close with me, he had jokes with me. Uh, the wife, he has a wife. You know the wife, isn't he? Yeah, Doris, the one that just finished telling the children's story. He has two uh, handsome men, young men, Maya and Manda. <laughs> He's a singer, isn't he? Yes. He's a singer, yeah. We sing together in the wonder of choir. And when I was singing, I was, I was trying to sing with him a tenor, and he said, no, 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 because my tenor was good than him. Then he said, I have to go to bass. So he pushed me away to bass, and I said, okay, you don't remain a tenor. Um, so I said, okay, because of that, I'm a runner. You know, when I say I'm a runner, uh, I was jogging. I like jogging. <laughs> That's what I'm good at. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to take you for jogging. <laughs> because you push me away from my, from tenor. And then, you know, you say, okay, just two miles. And 500 meters, I'm so like, oh, 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 oh. he's tired. And I said, okay, you win, you win. I lose, but I can run. More than that. So that's him. You'll be uh, sharing God's ways today. As we know that today is a feminist day. Uh, most of us, you see, the front we when the FA department. That's it for him. We have uh, so many singers in our church. One of them. Most people like deja vu being up here again today. On the 21st of 
December, we had Health Ministries Day. So this Health Ministries Day has come around very quickly. Now at the last Health Ministries Day, I made a, a very special announcement. Can anybody remember what that was? You know, we were talking about an experience that as young people in the North England Conference we had many years ago, when we were embarking on a project to build a church in Zimbabwe. And I put a challenge out on that day that we needed a theme song to go along with the building project that we're having here in Handsworth. And I haven't had anybody come back to me. So, sing it. <laughs> So, 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 so last time I gave you a couple of suggestions as to what the song should be like. So, the song that we had many years ago was around building, as I say, building a church in, in Zimbabwe. And as young people in the North England Conference, we, we tried to be more African. So we, we, we tried to take on the accents and... You know, we were singing Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, building a church in Zimbabwe. But the majority of the culture in here is, is Jamaican, am I wrong? No, Caribbean. Caribbean? Caribbean, Jamaican. <laughs> so I was saying, the name of the song needs to, need to reflect that culture. So, so maybe it, be, it should be something like, after... Never <laughs> be like church, <laughs> or something to that effect. So the challenge is still out there, church. The challenge is still out there. We need a theme song for the building project in Hampton. So it could be towards the Jamaican culture, or it could be any other. But we need a song. But at this time, I'm going to invite our children to come forward and clear the building funds up. We have a better church. <laughs> Let's not. Let's not. Until that theme comes to let's turn our hymnals to. Hymn number 531, 531, we'll build on the rock, 531.
challenges out there, church. Let us know what your submissions are. And church. Yeah, we'll be like church. <laughs> Sonia, come in front, please. One 
and you are mine. And uh, I don't know about you, but um, I've never sung, uh, seen her singing uh, in church, um, apart from uh, uh, doing what she does with her friends. Um, I think it's, um, let's encourage our young ones. Yeah? Let's encourage our young ones to uh, pick up the mantle. Yeah? Pick up the mantle and uh, carry on with God's work. And uh, I'd like to thank also Doris for the nice children's story. I think it was nice. Um, it's not only going to the children, but also to the others. You need to learn to differentiate God's voice and that the voice of the devil. You see, Anya, uh, when um, she was uh, told by others, move forward, she said, mm -mm. Yeah, so that indicating that she knew who to listen to. If we don't know who to listen to, we'll be listening to each and every voice and we'll be like reeds on the ocean. No, just whoever we with the currency on the waters, wherever it's going. So, um, thank you very much for that. Uh, let me just say that this afternoon uh, during the AYS, there is a lot of um, evidence from the Bible concerning um, the benefits and the advantages of being a Christian, isn't it? Is that true? Yes. Yeah, there is a lot of evidence. But I would like us to look at that evidence from the health point. So the program for AYS this afternoon is going to be um, focus on that. It's going to be titled Spirituality and Health. What are the scientific uh, benefits of being a Christian? What are the health benefits that we get from that? Yeah? So that is going to be this afternoon. Um, we are, uh, as you can see, we're struggling with our um, ID, but we thank the Lord um, that He is going to provide for us. So today um, is a throughout the world is a Health Ministers' Day um, in the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Uh, of course, I've had um, uh, people asking me. Mm, that was just a couple of weeks ago. We had another health day, yes. Um, but um, I thought um, because this is a day that the world church, I mean, the Seventh day Adventist to which you and I belong, um, set aside, uh, probably we should also go by that calendar and uh, see. It. And especially so that um, we've just become this year. Yeah? How many weeks are we now into 2020? Uh, two weeks. This is the second week, yeah? Let me ask you a question. Um, <laughs> some years back we looked at, um, at the year 2020 from a distance. Yeah? And uh, there was a popular saying, vision by 2020, yeah? Did you make any visions? Huh? Where about are you with um, those, uh, the vision that you made? Have it been fulfilled? Or we're still waiting for the fulfillment? Okay. Um, we are going to discuss on the topic Choose Life and Good Health too. And uh, this is, um, we're trying to see how can we live life to the full because this is God's given. Um, a free gift that God has given us. We read from the book of Deuteronomy. Is that the proper pronunciation? Deuteronomy. Okay. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6, and it's read, And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord and your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Why? That you may live. That you may live. 
the mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and this is from um, the um, the from from the General Conference uh, website, is to make disciples of Jesus Christ, who live as His loving witnesses and proclaim to all people the everlasting gospel of a free angel's message in the preparation for the soon coming return. Now, excuse me, but I don't see anything concerning health in that. <laughs> Why are we bothering with health? Um, why is the church promoting health? And yet the mission that has been given us to us is to make disciples for Christ. Is it the church business to promote health or the other organization? Uh, but in 1948, the World Health Organization gave a, a definition of health and they uh, apologize for those that are sitting on this side because um, unfortunately we've got only that side, so you have to be uh, straight up here. So they give a definition of health to say it's a complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Uh, and I've asked, where are you with your visions, the visions that you made? Because from the health point, the WHO gave us different visions and they had to put up strategies of how they think to attend that. And one of the visions was health for all. First it was by the year 2000 and then it moved to year 2020. Now, uh, you tell me health for all. We are in 2020 now. Is everybody healthy? What went wrong? Hmm? World well, promises, isn't it? And so you see that from 1984, you know, people have been trying to, you know, uh, put up visions and uh, describe it. And the question that I have is whose responsibility is it to promote health? Is it the church, the clergy? Or the big organization, the World Health Organization. So, welcome to Hansworth SGA Church and Health Promotion Agency. Yeah? <coughs> Maybe we should be changing the first step. Hello. Welcome to the hospital. Uh, Jesus commanded us um, in the Great Commission, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and, and the Holy Spirit. What has, what has that got to do with health? Uh, and yet the church is busy, uh, and actually we're building magnificent hospitals, yeah? Um, I've never seen a magnificent church that can be patched to the hospitals that we build. Right? And uh, if you look, go back to the uh, website, uh, you find a lot of um, um, information and the dates that are being put aside as to promote health throughout the year. 4th February is going to be the World Cancer Day. Yeah? Uh, just for example, uh, December 1st gone, it was the World AIDS Day. And the uh, 14th of November is World Diabetes Day. Still the question goes, why are we promoting health? It is evident, evident that uh, probably the church is spending a lot of money to uh, promote health. Um, maybe we should channel that, um, you know, that money to um, spreading the gospel. Um, and obviously health is not cheap. You look at the equipment that is being used and everything else. And uh, probably if you uh, go in confidence and ask uh, the health budget uh, of, uh, I mean, the budgets of different departments in different churches, you are going to discover that probably the health ministries is allocated um, a different budget than other budgets. Yeah? So it's not cheap. And yet we have companies that are doing that. In uh, 2018, uh, one of the pharmaceutical companies made a profit of $53 billion. Yeah? $53 billion. I don't know the ones that should be promoting health than the church. Uh, 
how, how, how much profit did we make in 2008? Do you know, as a church, as a church, bring it home. Yeah? You didn't make any profit. Okay. Um, therefore, um, health is not cheap. And uh, so, as a health department, the big question is, uh, why would the world change, be involved, and be concerned about health? The question is, does the world care about your physical health? Does it? I think he does. Let's see if he does. Answer, does Jesus care when my heart is pain? When the pain is too deep for mirth and song, and the burdens press and the cares distress. And of course, we know the resounding answer is what? Yes, yes he does. Yes, Jesus cares. And uh, because Jesus cares, that is the reason why the church, without looking at the, at the benefits that it can make, is involved in promoting health. Um, and this is uh, the holistic health. The concept of holistic health includes physical, social, mental or emotional, and spiritual well-being. So God values our bodies, and, so as, and he considers them as the temple of his Holy Spirit. Yeah? We read that in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. Uh, don't you know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost? And uh, um, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And that is the reason enough why the church promotes health and spends quite a considerable amount of money promoting health. And so as the, um, the church promotes health, as God cares for the physical health of each one of us, so the church has to care. And the, the church is not the building, the church is us, isn't it? We have to care for the health of others, those that are sitting next to you, and those that are not in here, we have to care. And so it appears to me the two of them, um, it is wonderful that there is a God who is concerned, who concerns himself with every human being personally, and it appears to me that the two of them, health and ministry, uh, uh, they are inseparable, you cannot separate them. And they, our Lord Jesus Christ um, gave us an example. He mingled with people, he interacted with them, and uh, uh, we read in the book, um, Ministry of Healing, Christ's method alone will give a true success in reaching the people. The Savior mingled with men, uh, he sympathized with them, he ministers to their needs, and then he bade them follow me. Amen. And that is a good example that Jesus Christ himself gave us. Um, he went seeking the lost, and uh, he was accused of uh, interacting with sinners. But 
despite whatever accusations that he received, he knew his purpose, he knew his goal, and he continued with what he came to do. Apart from preaching the gospel or the good news, we see Jesus um, looking for um, people that are lost and uh, healing. And there are a lot of uh, um, um, examples that the Bible gives us. And uh, he was eating with sinners and people complained. The Pharisees didn't want him to become unclean by touching the sinners. On the contrary, Jesus mingled with the people by sharing his social life with them. When they reproached him, Jesus had to explain many pillars of the Jewish faith of Israel's leaders. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God than burnt offering. So, our God cares for our physical health. The book um, Christ's Object Lesson tells us or asks us a question. How many of the wanderings, how many of the wandering ones, you, reader, oh, let me substitute that. How many of the wandering ones, you, listeners, have you, brought back to the fort. <coughs> when you turn from those who seem unpromising and unattractive, do you realize that you are neglecting the source for whom Christ is seeking? At the very time when you turn from them, they may be in the greatest need of your compassion. Many among them will be one for Christ. We have a duty to balance the two and uh, to move forward with the gospel. And of course, our men will have to mingle wisely, yeah? We read in the book of Numbers, when the people of God mingled with the world in the past, what happened? They participated in their sins. So we have to be rooted in our work with God so that we should be true the call. We should be true to the call. We are called to mingle with the world like salt, and how can we do that without losing our favor? We must know the limits, and we shouldn't cross when building relationships with non-believers. We have to be, and we have to do it with care. So, we have to mingle wisely. We are living in a perverse and a, um, a generation uh, for God, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do His, his good pleasure. Do, do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless, children of God without fault and in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as a light to the world. Are we shining as a light to the world? We need to shine as a light to the world through, well, you know, they say actions speak louder than words, isn't it? Is that true? Yes, actions speak louder than words. So whatever we do, sometimes it doesn't matter what we say, and especially, well, back home it's easy, you know, to, to, um, to speak about, about God, you know, in any, any, any environment that you are. It's different in this, in, you know, here. It's quite different, and uh, it's like you are, you know, pressing or you know, stomping on somebody's feet. They tell you, you stay with your, with your God, uh, with, you see. So, in those circumstances, and sometimes you may even lose our job. Huh? So, in those circumstances, may our behavior be the message that we preach. Remember, Christ mingled with um, the world. And so, um, in summary of that, he mingled with uh, people establishing friendship, meeting their needs, and winning their confidence, and he begged them, follow me. Now, uh, in the health department, we do that through the health promotion. But then I've come to realize that uh, it is not just an event. It has to be a journey. Yeah? It has to be a journey. Um, we have done uh, have wonderful health promotion and health export days uh, in the past, 
um, probably we've just uh, done them as an event. Maybe we should consider uh, taking them as a journey. And what do I mean by that? Um, a journey, um, simple definition, is a, the act of traveling from one place to another. Well, it could be traveling from one place to another, or it could be traveling in time. Yeah. So when we're doing uh, expos, we meet different people and that have different needs, and we are able to establish a circle of friendship that we can carry on and continue. And uh, we can um, uh, come up with different activities as a follow-up activities from um, the um, journeys that we have um, we have done. Let me share with you um, one slide. Uh, sorry, I'm going to skip a lot of that. I want to share with you one slide uh, from Hansworth Experience. Um, so, um, where does um, the journey begin? Let's see where this journey begin. I hope it is going to be... Um, <coughs> show um, but we have to stick to time so that's where the journey begins and it continues um, with the different activities um, so here is the Hansworth experience um, from the August um, the health expo that we did in the park we had about um, 118 uh, visitors, and these are the people that come from, that came from the community to the different um, um, stations, and uh, the graph shows, you know, um, the number of people at each station. Yeah, and uh, the interesting part is uh, we did a follow-up or we did um, um, a survey of what are the interests of the people, and. Uh, it's unfortunate that I can't see quite clearly from here, uh, but there were a number of people that, uh, that um, expressed uh, interest in uh, doing different um, health programs. So this is where we have to consider Health Expo as a journey, and that is the reason why the church is spending a lot of money promoting health and uh, uh, moving forward <laughs> with the gospel. Of course, it could be a, a challenge, challenging experience, uh, like any other um, uh, event. It's not easy just to, you know, stop someone from the street, or you have to, you know, befriend them. I don't know about you, but I have to befriend them first before I start sharing them with anything else. I have to make them, you know, they have to be my friends. And I am finding that this is one of the events uh, that I can easily do that because people that come 
are always willing, and of course we have to do that with love and respect. Now, a million dollar question is, what do you do to become wealthy? Different ways, and this takes us to our topic for today, choose life and good health too. And uh, uh, we have read um, in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 30, verse 6, um, this um, scene opens with the children of Israel on the border of the promised land. And Aaron, the brother of Moses, had already died, and Moses knows too that his time is short and that he, soon, he will soon die and he is not going to enter uh, into the promised land. And uh, as we have read, uh, so that you may love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. And at that time, the message from um, Moses to the children of Israel um, was love the Lord. And of course, we have to love him with a circumcised heart. And that's what it means. Love the Lord with a circumcised heart so that you may love the Lord your God with all your heart. Now that. And then Moses says something else very interesting to God's people, something that is worth it uh, even for us today. Moses says, now what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you to obey. For you, it's not difficult, it's not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It is not up to heaven, so that you can ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us, so that we may obey. Nor is it beyond the sea, so that you may ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us, so that we may obey. In other words, God is asking us something, is not asking us something that is beyond our reach. us to do is something that is very possible for us to do yeah. and continues to say no the ways is very clear to you it is in your mouth and your heart so that you may obey it. that's from uh, chapter 11 to uh, I mean chapter uh, verse 11 to verse 14 in, in other words what God is asking us to do is not beyond um, our reach it is possible for us here What's so fascinating about is that, think of a moment about the rules and regulations that accompany what we call the ceremonial laws. Um, the rabbi says there were about 613 laws. Was it, is that true? Yes. Yeah. 613 laws. Now, uh, God is giving and asking us to get just 10 laws. How about 613? We'll be able to keep them. Uh, but then, <coughs> We get to the text, the famous text um, that is said, uh, that is relevant to us today, and it was when it was when it was uttered from the Lord to Moses, who spoke it to the children of Israel. This day I call the heavens and the earth as a witness against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. Notice here that the word choose is, is going to everyone. Yeah? So we have to make a personal choice what we want to do with our lives. But God is instructing us choose lives so that you and your children may live. We can see that that that, that is why it is so relevant to us nowadays. Um, if that was not the case, then why did he not force Adam and Eve in the Garden of, in the garden of Eden to obey? Uh, the point is, God is not forcing anyone of us to do, but he's giving us instructions. If you want to live a better life, this is what you have to do. He's not forcing us. Yeah? Otherwise, he would have forced Adam and Eve never to touch the fruit. But he gave, us, he gave them a choice. 
Um, and the cross is the greatest example of reality, of free choice that God has given to the cosmos. Without free choice, we couldn't have seen. And uh, if we had not seen, Jesus would never have gone to the cross and uh, carry that instrument of torture all the way to the place of shame. Um, there were two explorers, uh, Robert and uh, Falcon. Uh, Robert. These two explorers, um, over 100 years ago, they were going to the uh, North Pole. So, um, they sought to be the first ones to lead an expedition to the South Pole. Sorry, the South Pole. Now, what made the decision, they, pre they were presented with countless choices. And the choice, choices were to select proper clothing uh, to wear and the right food to eat. And uh, the most important, the best method to get there. In this world, we have uh, the Inuit uh, people. And the Inuit tribe, these are the indigenous people of uh, um, the Akatari indigenous people in inhabiting the Arctic regions. And if you want to the south, want to go to the South Pole, you better get instructions from them because they know the best mode of transport. So, um, because that's where they live. Yeah. So Robert used their methodology. Okay. Robert uh, was a Norwegian explorer, and he obtained um, from the Inuit methodology the best type of equipment and clothing to uh, to, to to use. He chose dogs to pull the sleds. He placed his supplies, foodstuffs, strategically along uh, the path, and uh, um, he started off his journey. On the contrary, um, Robert Falcon, well, uh, a naval officer, um, very brave man, uh, but he chose to use ponies as a, and modern motor, motorized sledges. Uh, he was a very brave and daring man, but apparently he did not pay attention to detail and used the Inuit methodology. Uh, cut the long story short, one was a success, but the other one was a disaster. Uh, the disaster that um, when um, Robert reached the South Pole, um, his opponents were, uh, all, them, all of them were dead. And uh, he was late by 34 days. He found that his friend has already reached there for over a month. And uh, by the time they were returning, everybody on, on his team died. And um, they were, they, their remains were found eight months later by the search team. Why? Because they did not pay attention to uh, the right methodology. We are presented with choices in this life, aren't you? Yeah. Sometimes they are big and sometimes they are small. But in the end, we all make them, and uh, they come sometimes with consequences. Yeah. In fact, uh, we can say that our destiny sometimes is determined by our choices. Of course, that's heavy. But as we can see in the text that we have read, our choices can determine our eternal destiny and uh, how we, we live uh, this life. We are instructed uh, from the book of uh, Daniel, um, we read multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake some to everlasting life and others to shame and everlasting contact. How to imagine the destinies more different than those eternal life or eternal death. And uh, Sister White instructs us uh, from the book of Minister of Healing, um, the world needs today is what the world needed 1900 years ago, a reflection of Jesus Christ, a reflection of Jesus Christ. And uh, what I'm saying is we have uh, different talents. Of course, some of us, it's easy to approach someone and start initiating a conversation, yeah? But for many of us, and people like me, I'm sorry, uh, I find it hard. And uh, because of that, um, uh, since I joined the youth ministries, I find it easier 
to initiate a, a conversation. And um, um, the, the, the reading continues to say, a great work of reform is demanded and it is only through the grace of Christ that the work of restoration, physical, mental, and spiritual can be accomplished. You will notice that there is a link between physical health, mental health, and spiritual health. <coughs> so, what do you do with your life? Matters and it determines how free you are to serve the Lord, your God. We have uh, um, instructions from uh, God and uh, in the Bible, and uh, it tells us what we need to do and what we need to follow. Um, this is uh, um, one of the handmade Asian rocks. Uh, the story is that um, for these rocks to be made, there is a repetition of uh, um, uh, a, re a repetition of um, actions that go along. Um, and it says these rights are remarkable and often represent hundreds of thousands and sometimes even millions of individual choices. For those rights that are 800 hand, hand, noted, hand tied notes per square inch, the rug maker has to select a colored thread to repeat the pattern 800 times. That needs patience, isn't it? 800 times. Can we just imagine that sometimes our lives are just like that? Our lives are parted in a similar way. Every day we make countless choices, seemingly insignificant sometimes. But the sum of, the sum of it all, they determine the fabrics of our lives. Thus, we need to be careful and intentional in the choices that we make regarding our lives. Um, a 50-year-old man once said, <laughs> <laughs> how dare you how dare that 17 year old did this to me how dare that 17 year old did this to me who was he speaking to who was that 17 year old <laughs> himself so sometimes the choices that we make while we are young they determine how we are going to live our life for the rest of our lives yeah but we have to be careful so we have to be careful at each and every step of the way that God has given us. Uh, we have choices to make. You choose what you want to make. Fast food is up to you. Okay? But what benefit is it going to give to your life? Are you going to be healthy and to serve the Lord your God? Or you're going to stay and complain, why Lord? Huh? And uh, for my fellow parents, sometimes the machinery is, sometimes the cooperating practices can encumber our children with lifetime consequences. In many cases, the current epidemic of obesity in children reflects sometimes parental designations, allow, allowing too much electronic entertainment at the expense of physical activity. Now, I am a testimony. Um, I have a seven-year-old in, in my house. And uh, to be honest, it's not easy. All they want to do is, I want to watch that, I want to watch that. Yeah, It's not easy. But as a parent, you have to put your foot down to say no. You have to put your foot down and encourage them the health, healthful living. Because sometimes all you sit, and they, I observed that um, I said, let me see, and I observed that when I give him freedom to watch, you know, the, the programs on, on, on television, the, what we call children's programs, all he does there is sit there, watch and eat. <laughs> watch and eat. There's no running around. But once you say switch off the telly, no more watching television, well, <laughs> And then if there is noise in the house, more than the noise of the television, because you'll be jumping up and down, burning the calories. And so, I said, oh, I better have that noise than the noise on the television. After all, you're not learning anything from that, but you better be healthy. So it's not easy, but we can do it. 
Um, often some chubby children are... <laughs> some chubby children are of this adult in waiting. But let, let, me, let me be frank here, yeah? It's not everybody that we see, yeah, is that their eating habit is bad, okay? We must consider that there is also genetic makeup to that, okay? Um, in this country, I mean, in, in the UK, we struggle with the health message, and sometimes, most of the times, we think that the health message is about, you know, um, vegetarian and this and that. There is a lot that goes to that. My mother, um, who died in 1994, um, he never lived in the city. He lived in the village all her life. And uh, I can say that he was a vegetarian. She was a vegetarian. What do I mean by that? She will eat chicken maybe once a year. Okay? Maybe New Year. Okay? But to eat vegetables by default. Okay? Not by choice. But if I give you the pictures, you will say no. Because she was big. Alright? So the point that I'm trying to say is we have to be careful with our message. Yeah, we have to balance it. We have to be cautious that we do not offend every anybody, but we say it with love, gentleness, and uh, care. Yeah. Um, <coughs> the same holds true for all our lifestyle choices, including what we drink. I'll take this example. Freddie, for instance, was an alcoholic. Drinking was destroying him, and he knew it, it was destroying him. And he once shared a sad story. He said, when I was an infant, my mother would come home from work and would quieten him down if he was crying. He would add a little beer to his milk. Okay? Well, it didn't do him any bad. Of course, he would sleep. Okay? But he became an alcoholic from young age. So, those of us that are parents, we have to be careful what we feed our children. We have to be very, very careful what we allow them to eat. Now, you tell me, um, something is wrong here, isn't it? Yes, sir. But someone is happy there, isn't it? So, I think that's, I can see the mother is smiling, very happy. I wonder, why? Is she smiling because she's holding a baby or because um, she's got, is it? Cigar, what is a cigar? She's got a cigarette on her mouth, is it? Which is it? Yeah? Something is wrong here. And uh, the baby is not smoking, the mom is smoking. Now, uh, let me ask you a question. Who has never, ever smoked in here? Put your hands up. Never ever. Are you sure? Passive. Okay. And that is the danger with smoking. Okay? You don't want to smoke. You don't want to, you don't want to that thing. But because of what you are exposed to, we have for smoking. Yeah? And that is, of course, too bad. So secondhand smoke is also associated with sudden death infant syndrome. Yeah? You go through nine months of pregnancy uh, only to discover one morning that uh, that baby that, you, that brought joy to you is gone. That's too bad and that is too sad. What about that? Anything wrong with that? Why? One is asthmatic, isn't it? And the other one is uh, enjoying his cigarette. This, uh, is it doing any good with this baby? Well, and, the, and, the, and the truth is, we don't do it here. And they, but, but by that I mean, we don't do it even in our, in our houses. Okay. But maybe we know someone who does that. It is our duty, you know, to go and tell them. Of course, with love, we have to be careful. Yeah? We have to be careful how we do it, you see? Six million um, 
The hard facts about tobacco is that it kills nearly 6 million people each year. Of this number, more than 5 million are users, active smokers, and ex-users, okay? But 600,000 are people like you and me, okay? So that have just been exposed to second-hand smoking. Without agent intervention, the annual death toll could rise up to 8 million by 2030. Unfortunately, a lot of our youth, our young ones, and uh, our youth, I don't mean just in Hansworth Church, and probably I don't mean in Hansworth, but those that we know out there, they want to put their hand on tobacco. And uh, sometimes it feels as if they are enjoying. Now they have replaced the tobacco with, um, what, what is it called now? Fair. My goodness. My goodness. And uh, when, when, when they smoke it, the, the amount of you know, smoke that is coming in you know, from their nose is like, what is happening? Okay. What is happening? But we need a lot, and we need to encourage a lot of our young ones to say, uh uh, I don't want it. And that's what we need. We need to stand up, and uh, we need to do that. Uh, of course, choices are so important, and uh, the choices, the choices we make sometimes um, um, impacts others. Yeah, somebody chooses to smoke, as we have just seen, uh, but you don't, you do not choose to smoke. But if because you are close to them, you are affected. Yeah, but there is a lot of uh, um, evidence from the Bible. Uh, some people still argue that sometimes uh, we do not have the power of choice <coughs> and uh, that our lives are determined already, deterministic, yeah? Uh, for example, uh, if this morning you had um, a guru breakfast, uh, whatever you, you call guru breakfast, uh, some people say, well, that was not your choice, that was already determined. Uh, why did you not go and stop on McDonald's then and pick uh, something to eat? But that is not true. If it were so, then what could be the reason to punish people when they uh, commit a crime? So that is not true. And uh, we read there are so many texts in the Bible uh, that uh, place um, that show us and tell us that we make choices and we are free to make those choices. We have just read in the book of Deuteronomy, but also in the book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 37, of course it says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather you, your children, together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you are not what? Now, how can you be willing when you, you do not have a choice? You are only willing if there is a choice, and you are free to make that choice. Um, so, um, we choose what we want to um, have, we choose what we want to eat. In the first half of the 19th century, health reformers developed a, a litany um, of health laws based on standard evidence. Unfortunately, today we have a wealth of evidence that has been amassed since um, uh, that proves that um, uh, good health lifestyle is beneficial to our bodies. And as Christians, we need to be um, in the forefront to promote that and to live by that so that others should follow. And there are, of course, different choices. Uh, when, 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 when we go through the, 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 um, the you know, there's new stuff, yeah? What does, it, what does that mean? Nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, yeah? Temperance, okay? And all that list. And so we have to embrace all that. It's not only what you eat. You can have the best you know, diet in the world, 
But if you are not exercising, what benefit is it, is it doing to you? Well, somebody has just said that when I, after I, I, I ran, um, um, how, how, how many meters did you say that I was pointing? Just, oh, just to 500. At least I ran 500. Some wouldn't even run. <laughs> Some we wouldn't, wouldn't even run. And so uh, today, uh, th th that day, I, I, I was running after 500. Um, what he, he did not tell you is that uh, uh, the next day I, I, I was running. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, exercising sunlight. Well, when the summer is here, it's time for us to go outside and enjoy the sunshine. Yeah? And uh, look at both nature. Enjoy and uh, um, you know there is a message in nature. Yeah. Okay. Let me not dive in. So we can celebrate life in different ways. We must remember, however, whatever we do and whatever we say, we must remember and be careful to be um, cautious of what we are doing. Because Paul warned us, therefore. Do not let your good be spoken as of evil, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. As if that is not enough, uh, Sister White uh, uh, tells us, look at this quote. This quote is coming from the Review and Ellen. Uh, 1888. It is the desire and plan of Satan to bring in among of us those who will go to greater extremes, people of narrow minds who are critical and sharp and tenacious <laughs> in holding their own perceptions of what the truth means. They may be exacting and will seek to enforce precious duties and go to greater lengths in matters of minor importance while they neglect the weightier matters of the law, judgment, <coughs> mercy, and the love of God. Through the work of the few, this class of persons, the whole body of Sabbath keepers, will be designated as bigoted, pharistical, and fanatical. The work of the truth, because of these workers, will be thought to be unworthy of notice. You don't want to be an adventist that is doing that. Okay. Well, um, when she was uh, saying or writing that, the, the, the concept would have been different. But I'm applying this to even when we are promoting health to different people, even witnessing, we have to be, remember to be gentle in our approach, yeah, friendly in everything that we do, because God will hold us to ransom. Um, let me um, move forward. Uh, okay. Uh, this day I call the heavens and the earth as a witness against you that I have said before you life and the death and blessings and curses. We have read that. And now choose life that you and your children may live. What choice, what a choice presented to us. To, uh, presented before us. Yes, a choice that is, um, as the text reveals, impacts not on ourselves, but even on our children and uh, on others. The principle is clear. Our choices do impact others, and we have to be careful of what we choose. For we want to live a birthday and uh, enjoy life with the full. We may all, by the grace of God, seek to make the right choices that can have an impact, positive, imp positive impact for eternity. Let us now choose life so that we and our children may live soon, for soon and very soon we shall see the master coming in the clouds of glory. For behold, he comes with clouds of glory and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. But until then, let us choose to live life to the full and celebrate the gift that God has given us, and let us choose life and hope health. May the good Lord bless you all.
to thank Hempson for that important message of health. Um, and that we, health isn't just something we just do, it's part of our life and our spirituality. And if you come back this afternoon, there'll be more on that for you. So, choose life and live. And I will bring this portion of the service to a close with a hymn, 366. You can all stand, please.